Hi, I'm Roger De La Harp, and welcome to this, our latest video in the Venture into Lightroom series. In this video, we're going to have a chat about creating panoramic images in Adobe Lightroom, actually stitching the image together, and then have a quick look at enhancing that image, uh, and finally converting it into a black and white picture. Finally, there's a bonus tip. So what we're going to do is have a look at stitching these four images into this. And then taking that image, which we've edited in Lightroom, and creating a black and white version of it. A few years ago, we were in Serengeti National Park in Tanzania to shoot the annual wildebeest migration. The Serengeti is one of the most spectacular game reserves in all of Africa. Some 30,000 square kilometers of wide open spaces, vast plains, about 250,000 zebra and about 1.7 million wildebeest all migrating in a huge loop around the reserve. And then there's the rain. Rain like I've never seen it before. In the east, colossal storm heads build in the morning and as the day goes by, they move west, dumping huge amounts of water onto the felt. We initially visited the southern parts of the reserve to shoot the females and their calves. And then later in that same year, we went to film the really exciting stuff, the river crossings up in the north. It's pandemonium and vast quantities of wildebeest and a few zebras cross and recross the rivers up there. There is noise, drama, dust, smells, and after the heavens have dumped all that water on the ground, the most slippery, glutinous mud that you've ever come across. It was one afternoon in this pouring rain that we photographed these wildebeest getting absolutely drenched. So let's get to it. We select our four images, right-click them, and here, about a third of the way down the little dialog box that pops up, you'll see Photo Merge and then Panorama. So you click that and Lightroom creates a basic preview of the image. Now, up at the top here, you've got various projection methods that you can use. Spherical, cylindrical, and perspective. I generally find that I use either spherical or cylindrical, but occasionally I need to go to perspective to get the right blend of the images. I'm going to untick auto crop, and you can see how the images have not matched up in some of the areas and that's because I handheld this shooting out the, the the window of the vehicle. There are various ways we can deal with these white areas from boundary warp which is not ideal in this case because look what it does down here to the bottom of the image so we'll zero that. We could also try full edges but in this case it's not going to work well down here because what it does is it use, uses content aware to fill this area and it'll see these wildebeest standing here and try and put them in the foreground and that's not going to work. It'll work very nicely up here at the top in the in the sky. Auto crop is the way on this one and it puts together a rather nice panoramic image. You can also click auto settings if that's what you want but I prefer to do that later when we get this into into editing. If you like you can also click create stack I'm not going to do it in this case, but what it does is it just stacks the source images behind the panoramic image. But if that works for you, go for it. So all that's left to do now is to click Merge. My aged MacBook Pro takes a bit of a while to do all this. So what we're going to do is just speed things up in the background and we'll be back with you shortly. Right, so here's our panorama stitched together in Adobe Lightroom. Now the first thing that I do these days is I hit this auto function here in the basic panel of the develop module. If you click that, it gives you an idea of what Adobe would do to this picture to get the levels, the saturation and the rest of it right. It quite often gets it into the ballpark. And it's not always ideal, but it's a great place to start working from. Once you see what's there, you can tweak the settings and then get it looking the way you would like it to look. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is create a black point because we do need black in the image. 
and I'm going to hold down the Alt key and start dragging this black slider to the left. And there at the bottom of the picture, you can see the pixels starting to come in. Those are clipping, so we, we, we don't want that. We're going to just move it to the right until we can just see the, the pixels. And I'm going to leave it about there. I'm going to hold down the Alt key now and take the, the white slider and drag that to the right. And you'll see soon we start to get the white pixels coming in on the top of the image up in the sky there. So I'm going to come back a bit on that one and that's what we end up with. So I think that that's actually starting to look quite nice. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag the texture slider to the right. Not too much, up to about, yeah, let's go up to about 25 should do it. There we go. And a bit of clarity in there. Because what I want to do is to bring out the detail of all this rain pouring on those poor wildebeest. And I'm going to put just a smidgen, probably five of dehaze in it, just to bring out those trees a little bit in the background. Vibrant saturation is looking okay. Perhaps we could do with a little bit more. I do like the exposure that we've got here on the wildebeest. Uh, I think they're looking pretty good. But I do want to make this background a little bit more dark and gloomy as it was when we were up there. So I'm going to go to our graduated filter just below the histogram here at the top. Click on that. And then I'm going to click here in the image and drag it down. And there we go. Then I'm going to go to the exposure control and just make it a little bit darker. That's too much. There we go, just about there. And again, I'm just going to push up the texture and the clarity a little bit, just to bring out that background. And then, if you notice what's happened is that effect has gone over these wildebeest and these trees in the foreground here, which I, and I don't want it to do that. So that's easily fixed. If we go to the range mask below all the settings here and click on luminance, we then have a little thing down here that says show luminous mask and I'm going to click that and there you can see what it is that we're affecting in this this filter that we, we've brought down. Now I'm going to take the range mask I'm actually going to drag that to the right excluding the darker areas of the picture and as we drag it to the right we can see the dark areas are being excluded, that is they're not covered in pink, whereas the bright areas are. And I think that's about it. And you can see quite clearly there how it's only this, this background that's be, and really only the sky that's being affected. So once that's done we can uncheck that so we can actually see what's happening in the image. And there we go. How's that looking? I think it's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to come back just a little bit more on that sky. Oops, too much. There we go. And I'm just going to increase the contrast a little bit there. Yeah, something like that. There you can see the effect of it. By clicking this little switch down here in the bottom left-hand corner of the panel. That's um, off. And then we click it again. And there we go, that's the effect it's had. Right, click again the icon under the, um, the histogram and there we go. So I'm happy with that picture, the way it's looking. And let's now create our black and white image. So the first thing I'm going to do is right click the thumbnail there in the picture. And about halfway down it says create virtual copy. Right, so we've got our, our original picture on the left and the virtual copy on the right. Now if you go up to the top right hand corner of the basic panel you'll see these four little icons here. If you click that it brings down a selection of profiles that you can apply to the image. Now if you just hover over these there's a whole bunch of them um, artistic black and white there's modern there's vintage and all sorts of things but we want to convert this to black and white and if you hover the cursor over the image you can see the effect that that will have on the image. So go through those, find one you like, one that works for you. 
Um, I quite like the first one actually. But number four is also nice. Anyway, work your way through those, see what you like. I'm going to go with number four. And now you can close that and we're back with the image. Again, let's just see what's happened with the, the levels and the black clipping. I noticed there is a bit there in amongst the wildebeest. Mm, that could be a little bit of a problem. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and again drag that slider a little bit to the right and just get rid of some of that clipping down there. That's looking good. The white side of things on the histogram is looking pretty good. Overall though, I'd say it's a little bit bright, so I'm going to darken it using the exposure control just a little bit. There we go, something like that. And then what I'm going to do is take the clarity slider and just push it to the right. You can be generous here. I'm going to go up to about 40 or thereabouts. And that's about it. We have our black and white picture and we have our color picture. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, we'll be back with another one soon. Do click subscribe and make sure to hit the little brass uh, reminder bell. And in the meantime, have a lot of fun. Cheers.